In this lesson unit on phonetics and phonology, we're going to look at how the sound system of languages works, focusing on English. You'll learn a lot about the physiological mechanisms involved in producing and perceiving the sounds used for language, and how these sounds are categorized. After completing this unit, you should be able to identify the major sound categories of English and pronounce words based on how they are represented in the International Phonetic Alphabet that is used by dictionaries, language textbooks, and Google Translate. You should also develop a good understanding of the relationship between the sounds of English and the spelling system. And because of this, you will appreciate what's involved in learning to read and write and will be a better guide for those you may someday assist in this process. I want to start by inviting you to imagine our prehistoric ancestors in Eurasia at a time prior to the emergence of civilizations. Back then, people spent a lot of their time foraging and hunting for food and figuring out how to do such things well. There's lots of evidence to suggest that they were very interested in the control of what they saw as both natural and supernatural forces and the use of their voices to cast spells, to summon or call forth spirits, and to work magic. And because of this, they had lots of words for speaking, asking, calling, cursing, and commanding, and all the things that people do with their mouths and their voices. Using the tools of linguistics for reconstructing prehistoric languages and cultures, Russian linguist Arundel Polsky has compared the sounds and meanings of thousands of words in many related languages. And by doing this, he's reconstructed much of the vocabulary and grammar of a language that's believed to have been spoken more than 15,000 years ago, and that is the ancestral source of many of the languages that are now spoken all over the globe, as well as many others that have vanished but were once spoken by ancient cultures with homelands in Europe, Asia, and North Africa. Let's listen now to Professor Dogopolsky as he gives us a glimpse into the world of our ancient Eurasian ancestors, as it can be reconstructed from the language that they spoke. Through the telescope of the vocabulary, we can discern a hunter who is, is following the Asa. The tracks, Goki, Gudia, Mirio, of a beast, Guira, is casting a spell, Koru, Shubia, and is trying to hit Tapa, the target, and is afraid of missing Mena, it. Among the animals he hunts, Hakra or Harka, there are different kinds of antelopes. Oryu, Gula, Gurha, etc. He knows a lot about the anatomy of animals. Meat, Homsha, Syria, Marrow, Aingo, Spleen, Lepa, Palge. Some words are connected with spiritual culture, such as though meaning to make magic, to use magical forces. Arba. The crafting of tools from stone and later from metal was important in the evolution of the human species and the development of civilization. But even more important was the evolutionary adaptation of the vocal tract to produce the sounds of language. Because language was important for people to not only control what they saw as magical forces and to explain to each other how to best find and kill antelope and wild boars and to use their body parts most effectively, but also to be able to share ideas with each other Language made it possible for us to talk about the past and to imagine the future together and to do such things as create shared plans based on imagined contingencies. It would have been hard to sketch out diagrams in the dirt for many potentially useful thoughts. If you had to quickly devise a plan before an encounter with strangers posing a potential threat, it's not clear how you might draw what you can express with your voice in a matter of seconds with a sentence like this. I don't know if a few of them show up and they aren't armed. Let's invite them to have dinner with us rather than killing them. 
The verb ban is one of the words of English whose roots can be traced way back in time. In Old English, it meant to summon or curse, and it originated as a word starting with a B sound in a language known as Proto-Indo-European that had not only English as a descendant, but also Norwegian, German, Latin, Greek, and Hindi, to name just a few. The word root phone, meaning sound, which shows up in numerous modern English words, including phonics, phonetics, and phonology, was borrowed from Greek and is ultimately from the same Indo-European root that gave us ban from Old Norse, which is the ancestral source of modern Norwegian, Swedish, and Danish. If we look at the history of words, meaning say, and sound, and voice, or the like, in the languages descended from Proto-Indo-European, and even the languages from which Proto-Indo-European itself must have descended, we see over and over again traces of the idea that language, which manifests itself in the human voice and the sounds of speech, is something that we use to control the forces that make things happen in the world. Language is, and always has been, a powerful tool. It's the tool we use to both ban members of our community from doing some things and to empower them to do others. What we're looking at in this lesson unit is the phenomenon of speaking and hearing, or the speech chain of linguistic communication, which makes it possible for us to share concepts with others by means of intricate manipulations of the airstream flowing out of our lungs. Using our vocal cords and lips and tongue and other parts of our mouth, we cause this airstream to create sound waves in a variety of precise patterns that travel rapidly through the air and cause a series of mechanical responses in the ears and brains of the people we're talking to, such that they can reconstruct the meanings of the words and sentences that are encoded in the patterns registered in the sound waves. Among other things, you should come away from this set of lessons with an appreciation of why it is that a linguist who studies the historical development of languages would see the connection between the words ban and phone because of the way they are alike in terms of both their meanings and their sound structures.